Hello and welcome to Fancy Blank Gold. This is a bit of a special video in terms of what I normally do. This is uh, kind of a behind the scenes video where I'll show you how I change water in my tank. Now this is my 660 liter or roughly 175 gallon tank. It's two meters long. It has uh, eight fish in it, I believe. And I'm gonna show you how I change water, what kind of equipment I use, try to tell you why I do stuff and why I don't do stuff. Um, bit of disclaimer here, because I do live in Europe, I do live in a country where the tap water is fish safe, there is no chlorine or anything in it. Um, I don't really use Prime or whatever uh, that you Americans use. So if you try to copy any of the things that I do, please consider this at least. And also there is some things that I do that you necessarily doesn't, you don't have to do, or there are some things that you have to do. I don't have gravel, I have a bare bottom tank, so therefore I can do some things that you might not be able to do and there are some things that you have to do like taking, you know, cleaning your gravel and stuff like that. That gives you some challenges that I don't have and I have some challenges that you don't have, you know. So this is just to show you how I do this. Um, I'll show you like some different segments of my water changing routine and tell you why I do these things uh, and why uh, I have it this way probably. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Uh, you can see the fish here swimming around behind me. They're all excited because me being near the tank often means that they are getting something to eat and I do have a snack prepared for them. One of the first things that I do and why I give them a snack while I do water changes is that I take everything that I can pretty much out of the tank to make it easier to clean. So I remove my plants that are on the bottom. Uh, I have plants on wood and rock. Uh, I take these out because a lot of debris and like leftover foods and stuff like that get caught underneath all these uh, plants and rocks and wood pieces that I have in the tank. So I take this out. This also makes cleaning my bare bottom tank a lot easier. Then I remove the fish. I put them in a plastic container, a big plastic container around 40 liters. And this allows me to empty the tank faster Make sure they don't get hurt by the pump that I use. I'll show you that when I am about to use it. And it also makes feeding the fish some very messy snack a lot easier because it's not in the tank, it's just in this plastic container here. So it's it's a lot easier to, you know, make sure that the water in the tank is pristine, doesn't get as messy and it doesn't get you know, as bad as it can when having these poop machines that they are. So let me just show you some of the equipment that I use for for this. These here, nice plastic containers here, I have two of them, are for putting my plants in, so they're out of the tank, and the other one I filled with water and have my fish in it while I change. Now I do put a air stone connected to my air pump into the container so there's a good aeration of water a good exchange of gases and just keeping the fish happy while I work on the tank so without really further ado <laughs> let's start with uh, getting my top here off and getting the plants and the fish into the tank and I'll show you what happens next. So, uh, I'm prepping the actual water change of my tank and I just want to show you pretty much what I've done. So I've taken out all of the plants, as I hope you can see there are no plants here on the bottom, the bottom is clear, the fish are swimming around. 
I turned off my two pumps, my two filter pumps. I keep all the plants on the back wall. Uh, I don't really find it necessary to remove them. Uh, it does help when you need to clean algae off of the tank, but I don't have that much algae on the back of the tank. It's more on the bottom and on the plants themselves. I've prepared, here you can see it, but one of the plastic totes is uh, filled with water. I just used there it is, a little plastic tubing here just to suck water out of the tank into the, the plastic container here. So when I do move the fish into it, it's uh, you know tank water they used to it. It's not new water, it's just you know tank water. And I'm gonna hook up this uh, filter stone here, really big filter stone with a bit of tubing to my filter pump that runs on the tank so that there is going to be a lot of aeration, a lot of yeah, good exchange between the air and the water, keeping the water oxygenated sorry, uh, and keeping the fish happy here while I change the water and to get the fish from the tank and into the container which is here right beside me I'm gonna use this to scoop out the fish with water and then pour them gently into the container so they are gonna be there you know uh, the next you know, hour or so while I clean the tank change the water and fill the fill the, the tank back up again and while they're in there they're gonna get their snack and I'm gonna show you that now the plants are in the other container without water. Uh, it doesn't really hurt them that bad for the, the hour here. Uh, they still grow pretty good. Uh, so they don't really, it's not really that bad for them to be out an hour. So now become, comes their hardest part, I think. It's catching the fish without splashing water all over the place and getting them into this and I'm gonna spare you that because it's just gonna be my ass you're gonna see hunched over trying to hunt the fish so there's no need for you to see that so I'll show you when the fish are in the container and I'll show you them getting a bit of a treat and then I'll show you how I get water out of the tank so here are the fish in their container here while I change the water I haven't put the airstone in, so this is why the surface is so calm, but I thought this would be a, a good view of the fish here while I change the water, so you can actually see them from the top. As you can see, I have a lot of black fish, and I'm really living up to the name Fancy Black Gold. And just to show you here next to them, these are the plants that I have in the tank, which are also in this container here. Just to show you how I keep them, keep them uh, while I change the water. And if we just quickly here are the snails that I have in my tank as well. Uh, these help a bit to keep the tank clean, especially the big one, the big with the yellow antennas there. It's very active and very good at that. And I take these out as well because it's just easier to have them out of sight of the tank while I clean the water so I can pretty much just go nuts in the tank while I do it. Before I take water out of the tank I just wanted to show you here my bare bottom tank and how dirty the fish and snails make this tank. And this is in a week while I have two very big filters running on this tank and just look at all this poop and debris that is gathered under my wood and plants and rocks on, and plants on rocks as well so this is this is insane this is and I'll look at all the algae here on the bottom as well we need to get all this out so that the new water doesn't get, you know, filled up with bad stuff from all this. So now I'm just about ready to actually get all this dirty water out of the tank and into the sink. 
and I'm gonna show you the things that I use for that part. So the main thing, and the most important thing, is this guy here. This here is a sump pump, I think people call it a pond pump even. And it's, it works very, very simple. It sucks water in here in the front part, and water comes out here. So, it, if you just put it in, it will just spurt water out here and suck it in here. Now, one of the reasons why I do take the fish out of the tank while I use this, is that I have experienced fish getting stuck to the pump. This happened to a sick fish of mine, and it pretty much killed it. So, and a lot of people do experience injuries, fish getting su sucked to the front of the pump and stuff like that. So this is why I remove the fish while I change the water. You can add protection on the front of this, but it decreases the amount of water that goes through it. So your water change takes longer. Now, uh, if you don't want to remove your fish, can remove your fish from your tank while you do it, a good idea is to place this very close to the glass so the chance of a fish swimming by and actually getting stuck here is very unlikely. But as I said, I like to do it because I can also feed my fish something that I wouldn't feed in the tank. I'll show you that in a bit. So this is part one of getting water out of the tank. Uh, this is an Eheim something 2000. So it runs roughly 2000 liters per hour. Now the other part of getting uh, the water to the sink is my hose. So I have this big hose here, this long green hose which is an Eheim hose and this I just plug one end to the pump and the other end in the sink and I secure it in the sink so it doesn't move around and then the water is transported without me actually having to do any work very fast into the sink uh, people can also you can use this water if you have like for your garden for your flowers if you have a vegetable garden it's very very good because there are a lot of nutrients in fish poop and fish uh, water filled with fish poop so you can do that if you want now as you saw before my tank bottom is very dirty there is a lot of debris a lot of leftover food a lot of poop a lot of plant debris you know just debris from the the tank and we need to get this out so that the new water doesn't get fouled by this water this is why we change water and clean our tank and for that <clears throat> i'm just going to use a, a very simple method it's a black bucket and this piece of hose again and I'm just gonna put one end of the hose into the bottom so I got all the debris the other end here in the bucket and then I'm gonna carry the bucket to the sink empty it rinse repeat until I'm happy with how clean the bottom of the tank is so I do have to work a bit even though I have this ingenious pump and this long holes that I showed you just before which tr transport the water for me but it doesn't clean the tank uh, doesn't get all the debris out so you have to work a bit for that and yeah so that's, that's why I use this and I do probably about four or five buckets at least because it is a big tank with a big surface so you need to get water around and you know get all of the debris out of it and then the next part while the tank is emptying I clean the tank and I scrub the tank for algae and let me see oh, I don't have it here oh, oh maybe here it is and um, these are my tools for scrubbing the tank now this as you can see has a pretty decent length it has a sponge here in the end and I use this to scrub the hump to reach places in the tank and the bottom. This is very good to just scrub a large portion of the tank pretty fast without having to, you know, I'm not that tall, the tank is pretty deep. So this just helps a lot 
to do that and then just a normal sponge here with the green side and I use the green side here to scrub all the algae of the glass, of the sides, of the filters, all these things. So this is this is you know very important to have when cleaning your tank. So yeah I'm gonna show you now the <laughs> best part for the fish of this water change is them getting something to eat. Now I'm feeding them frozen bloodworms uh, which has been defrosting in a glass and then I'm just gonna dump it in and let you see the fish go crazy which they, oh, I promise you they do. So so here a bit awkward with the uh, the camera stand but you know you can see the fish you can see I put it in the air stone getting a good aeration of the water here the fish are swimming around pooping just doing their thing and getting excited because here comes the food so this is frozen bloodworms that are defrosting in this glass and they're ready to be consumed here by the fish so I'm gonna pour this in and you're gonna see the fish go crazy hopefully they normally do at least so the feast is on usually they eat uh, this amount of blood worms in I would say 15 minutes so there are a, a, a few fish here so they do get their share all of them so this is also why I feed it here as you can see it's quite messy and if you have your filters running while you feed this in the tank you're just gonna get blood worms in your tank in your filters um, which you know it's okay but it's still it's still not as good as not having it. It's, it's better that they're not in your filtration. So this is just, you know, to keep the fish happy and get them fed a bit here and they can just pig out really <laughs> while I do a water change and then they don't mind it as much, I hope. So you can see here the pump is in the tank and it's sucking out the water into the sink in the kitchen. I'll show you in a bit how I done that. So we're here in the kitchen. You can see the water from the tank is running here out in the sink. I secured the hose here with a bit of a clamp here just to keep it in place. There is a bit of you know tension because of the water coming out. So keeping it in place like this is a very good idea. So you can see the water is actually coming pretty decent coming out of the tank here so this is just so much easier I would never be able to do 660 liters of tank water uh, this fast or without you know dying really because it's, it's gonna be pretty hard to, to <laughs> get that with just you know buckets so yeah so we are here at the true midway point of the water change as you can see the tank is now has about uh, five, six centimeters of water in it. This took me roughly 40 minutes, I think, to, to change, to get all the water out with the pump. I did myself uh, three and a half buckets of roughly 20 liters of water. So let's just say 60 liters of water to make it, you know, pretty easy. That means that less than a tenth of the entire volume of the tank I had to carry. The rest of it was uh, you know just by sheer the pump. So now I'm gonna empty out this hose here, curl it back up and you know it's gonna be yeah pretty much that. And the fish have pretty much finished eating all their blood worms and they look very very happy so yeah that is pretty pretty good. So I'll show you in a bit how I actually fill up the tank and uh, show you how that works and how I do it and how easy it can be done so you don't have to carry buckets the other way because that is 
equally as hard and if I had to do that on my 660 liters, I don't think I would have goldfish in it just because of the sheer amount of water cheese that they need. So I'll show you a bit of the fish also uh, before I, I plump them back in when the water is filled up. So. so just to show you the fish here, they have devoured all, well, most of all the blood worms and are now going, wait, wait, there isn't more, more? Do we get more? Sadly, fish, you do not. You have to wait for dinner. So they're just swimming around here in the water and as you can see the water is a bit dirty from the feeding and them swimming around in it so this is why also that I use this container here to keep them in while I feed them as it is a bit so this is how I fill water into the tank as you can see here we have the two parts of the adapter we have the one here on the sink and we have the other part here which is attached to a hose and we just do like that make sure it's nice and tight and we can now turn on the water to the temperature that we want so this is the other end of my system you can see here I have a, the clamp on the aquarium keeping the hose in place so it doesn't go all over the place and splash water and you can see water here coming back into the tank filling it up um, this takes um, 30 minutes probably to do and I'll, the only thing I actually do now is uh, add the aqua safe just rearrange the plants a bit put the plants back in and then it's just plumping the fish back into the tank and I'm pretty much done you know so so I just finish filling up the tank as you can see there's a lot of uh, air bubbles from you know filling the tank up with new water so that's why some of it is a bit white and it's a bit you know not clean looking uh, both of the filters are just started up and they do this routine where they run for a bit then power off empty themselves from air and then start full time up again and they're just in the process of that uh, so now all I have to do is put the fish into the tank, same way really I got them into, got them out of the tank, uh, and then I'm just going to show you the fish swimming around a bit in the new clean water, and then, you know, this is how I change my water. It took me roughly one, one and a half hour total work uh, of doing this, you know, but uh, when the tank is emptying and I'm done, you know, cleaning the bottom, sucking out all the debris and stuff like that, I just sit down, relax, wait for the, you know, <laughs> for the tank to be empty and when it's refilling, there really isn't much for me to do other than keep make sure that the temperature is correct, that, you know, it doesn't overflow. So what I've just been doing is just sitting at my computer really relaxing. So I put the plants back in, I put the snails back in, just getting pretty much set for getting the fish back in. Uh, so the fish are going to go back in now. Just going to show you that real quick and then, you know, that was it. Easy peasy. So I hope you learned something, I hope you can use some of this uh, for your tank, for your water changes, making it as easy as possible uh, for yourself and as stress free for the fish as possible. Uh, I have great success in doing this, I like that my fish can get the frozen bloodworms without dirtying the tank water. A solution if you want to keep your fish uh, in the tank while you feed this would be to do it just before you do a water change so you will like feed uh, the frozen blood worms in the tank maybe shut off the filters it could be idea and then the next day or the same day change the water so you get all the debris, debris out they do poop a lot from this and the water do get to for my liking at least a bit yucky from frozen blood worms so yeah Oh, let me just get the fish in, show you that real quick, that they're in, in, back in the tank, uh, loving it, and then, yeah. So, here are the fish 
back into the tank, swimming around, being happy, enjoying the new clean water. Got their bellies full of blood worms. Yeah, and that was that was it. That was me changing the water, getting the tank clean. It looks a bit, I don't know, not clean the water, but it's due to all the small water bubbles from the new water that haven't really gotten out of the water yet. But as those fish swim around, touch all the plants, touch everything, it's it's gonna go away.